preparation model paper 27 so far uh, we have seen videos related to only mcq based so hereafter uh, uh, the model papers are going to be like fill in the blanks match the following and various other kinds will be there so i am nh shankar ready phd plan pathology the first one is uh, expand iesem and iesem was uh, developed by so first of all we will see what is the expansion of this iesem so iesem means uh, immunosorbent uh, electron microscopy this is a kind of electron microscope where uh, it was developed by a uh, derrick immunosorbent electron microscopy which was developed by derrick sterilization temperature for uh, autoclave generally uh, uh, you know uh, based on the options we must answer this question but there is a standard uh, autoclave temperature is there 121.6 degrees celsius for 15 psi pressure for 15 minutes generally in a couple of exams that i wrote before so they mentioned right uh, like 121 degrees for uh, 15 psi for 15 to 20 minutes something like that so based on the options we must answer <coughs> But the standard sterilization temperature for autoclave is 121.6 degrees Celsius for 15 PSI for 15 minutes. So this is the standard autoclave temperature. So generally hot air woven, we know uh, autoclave was, uh, uh, autoclave is a sterilization uh, equipment, whereas uh, hot air woven is also a sterilization equipment. If you see, Autoclave is based on uh, moist heat sterilization, but uh, hot air oven is based on dry heat sterilization. Autoclave was uh, invented by Charles Chamberlain. Hot air oven was uh, uh, invented by or developed by uh, Louis Pasteur. So here, in, when it comes to autoclave, autoclave can be uh, contains a wide range of temperatures. Generally, 160 degrees Celsius for one or two hours. One to two hours uh, is the general sterilization temperature that we recommend here. And the next one is uh, ELISA was uh, developed by. So first see what is ELISA. So enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. That is uh, the full expansion of ELISA. It is the one kind of technique which is used for the detection of plant viruses. And it is also said to be the one of the most uh, sensitive techniques for the detection of uh, plant viruses. So ELISA was uh, developed by Adam and Clark in 1977. In majority of the literature, it is mentioned that Adam and Clark only. In couple of literature, it is mentioned that Wohler 1976 uh, 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 and this Adam and Clark 1977 is uh, considered to be the developers of this ELISA. So generally, majority of the literature, it is mentioned that Adam and Clark only. So ELISA was developed by Adam and Clark in 1977. So, and one more fungicide that is metaloxal. Metaloxal is also developed in the year 1977. Just, uh, you know, uh, recalling the discoveries that happens in 1977, okay. But uh, just remember, ELISA is an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So, it was developed by Adam and Clark. Generally, the ELISA is plate. There is a plate uh, uh, which is actually made up of polystyrene, polystyrene plate. Uh, it consists of 96 wells, 12 into 8 to 8 is a 96 right so 96 plates generally the elisa plate is consists of various kinds of holes 72 96 384 5386 so the customized wells also there are around uh, you know uh, nearly 9000 holes of uh, elisa plate is also available based on our requirement but uh, the most uh, common and standard elisa plate is consist of 96 wells 12 into 8 96 wells though as i told you this elisa plate is made up of uh, polystyrene and uh, each hole as i told you 96 holes right each hole uh, it weigh, uh, it sizes about 0.4 microliter and it can hold 0.4 microliter sample and uh, the sensitivity of elisa the next question is sensitivity of elisa is 1 to 10 nanogram per ml so 1 to 10 nanogram per ml is the sensitivity of elisa if you see the pcr 1 to 10 picogram 1 to 10 picogram per ml is the sensitivity of uh, pcr but the sensitivity of elisa is 1 to 10 nanogram the next one is the uh, elisa plate is uh, made up of so just now we discussed elisa plate is made up of uh, polystyrene so elisa plate is a uh, composed uh, elisa plate is made up of uh, polystyrene this is also very important one what is the most sensitive technique used for the detection of plant pathogens elisa 
just now we discussed the most sensitive technique is elisa then pcr and other things we used to say so but uh, in if we see in the previous years question this question was uh, repeatedly asked what is the most sensitive technique used for the detection of uh, plant pathogens or plant viruses so generally elisa technique is the most sensitive technique uh, that can detect uh, uh, plant viruses number of wells uh, present in elisa plate uh, we discuss right generally it consists of 96 wells this so let's uh, mention only standard plate okay the standard plate consists of 96 wells 12 into 8 and the blotter paper method was uh, developed by so this blotter paper method is generally used for the identification of uh, seed borne pathogens especially seed borne fungi only not bacteria and virus okay so this technique was actually developed by louis uh, doyer he is also considered as the first official seed path plant path sorry official seed pathologist uh, and he developed this blotter paper uh, uh, technique in 1938 around probably and the standard extension temperature for uh, PCRs. See, generally PCRs, uh, various kinds of PCRs are there. There are around 38 to 40 types of PCRs are there. Among all the PCRs, uh, that generally there are three kinds of procedures. I mean, uh, temperatures will be uh, uh, will be observed in this uh, PCR, like denaturation, annealing, extension. So there are different kinds of uh, uh, temperatures will happen in PCR, but if you see all the PCRs, denaturation and annealing temperatures may vary with one or two degrees centigrade. Generally, denaturation will happen at 93 to 96 degrees Celsius. So it may vary from PCR to PCR. General PCR it means at 94 degrees. Some PCRs may be 95. That is the standard denaturation temperature. So denaturation uh, happens at the temperature. Annealing is uh, in the range between 55 to 65. But the extension, if you take any PCR, majority of the PCRs, the standard extension temperature is uh, 72 degrees Celsius. So this is the standard extension temperature. Uh, the next one is uh, expand lamp, LAMP, loop mediated isothermal amplification. This is uh, the technique which was developed by Notomi et al. It is also a DNA amplification technique. Then already PCR was there. Then why lamp? The main difference between lamp and PCR is in PCR three kinds of temperatures we have mentioned, right? In lamp there is no such kind of things. So lamp can uh, extend the or the lamp can amplify the DNA at a standard temperature range of 65. So 60 to 65 generally it is the majority of the literature that is mentioned. It is a 65. So 65 is the standard temperature the where all the things denaturation, annealing, extension, whatever it is. So it eliminate all the steps and the entire DNA amplification happens at a standard temperature in the lamp. So that is the main difference between PCR and the lamp. This was developed by Notomi et al. Uh, in 2000, I think, with the help of Aiken Chemicals uh, Private Limited, probably. So generally, they have asked is uh, uh, expand lamp loop mediated isothermal amplification. That is the expansion of lamp. Southern blotting technique was uh, developed by, let's go through, generally we used to see news, right? News, N-E-W-S. News means north, south, east, west. So collecting all the information from all the direction and telling in the TV, that is the news, okay? You just remember N stands for north, S stands for south, W stands for west, okay? In north, north people are so white, just remember uh, their uh, DNA content is less, so instead of DNA, RNA. So South Indian people are little bit, uh, little bit uh, dark in color, right? Of course, white people are there. That is different, uh, secondary. So because it contains uh, more, more DNA generally. So West, if you see Mumbai, Mumbai is the West. Generally, majority of the protein production companies uh, will be stands at uh, West. So protein. So what I'm trying for just remembrance only, I'm telling all these things, okay? Northern blotting technique, RNA southern blotting technique dna western blotting technique protein so these are all the identification technique northern blotting technique is used for the identification of rna southern blotting technique is used for the identification of dna western blotting technique is used for the identification of uh, protein so what they have asked here is southern blotting technique is employed employed into nothing but uh, detection only okay na? so southern blotting technique is used for the employment of just now i told you dna it was developed by a scientist called em southern in 1975 so southern blotting technique was uh, employed for uh, dna so the next one is the uh, ptgs was the first described in the organism ptgs in the sense post transcriptional gene silencing it is the technique uh, 
uh, where if you see in the corona times also where we would with vaccines like covaxin covid shield sputnik or various kinds of vaccines so majority of the vaccines the reason behind are uh, the technology behind is this rna silencing this rna silencing is also known as post transcriptional gene silencing quelling in fungi so with the various names but the phenomenon is same okay this post transcriptional gene silencing was first described in the organism a nematode that is a kino rhabdis elegans so it was first discovered by andrew fire and craig mello in 1998 for that they got nobel prize in 2006 probably so this ptg is described in the organism kino rhabdis elegans the next question is first empirical mycologist in india so ej butler ej butler is generally considered as the first empirical mycologist in india he is also considered as the father of uh, in plant pathology in india and father of mycology and he wrote many books okay fungi and diseases in plants so other pithium kind of species the new genera alomasis was created by him so other kinds of contributions also there that we have already discussed in the uh, history section so the next one is the fungi and plant diseases was written by anyway here fungi and fungi and diseases in plant was written by ej butler that is father of plant pathology in india fungi and plant diseases in india was written by bb munkur so bb munkur is renowned for the uh, establishment of ips indian pathological society right so fungi and plant diseases was written by bb munkur next one the first plant pathogenic fungi name the first plant pathogenic fungi to be completely genome sequenced come uh, the first uh, then second one is who is the scientist involved on the year so the first plant pathogenic fungi they have mentioned pathogenic fungi okay be clear about it so if it is the first fungi to be completely genome sequenced probably it falls under yeast uh yeast genome project saccharomyces cerevisiae that happens in 1989 to 1995 probably so that is the first fungi that is completely genome sequenced when it comes to first plant pathogenic fungus to be completely genome sequenced so it was uh, rice blast fungus rice blast which is caused by pyricularia varizae or magnoporta griseae right telomorphicus magnoporta griseae and the scientist involved is uh, d netal d netal the year of sequence is uh, 2005 So I repeat, the first plant pathogenic fungus to be completely genome sequenced is rice blast. Scientist involved is the D netal, and the year is 2005. Name the first plant pathogenic bacterium they are asking. Xylella fastidiosa. So Xylella fastidiosa. It was uh, sequenced by uh, A J G Simpson. Simpson in the year 2000. In the year 2000 with the help of Brazilian consortium. So there is a small thing behind this. Uh, uh, the Xylella fastidiosa was a little bit uh, severe in Brazil uh, on citrus plants and as well as grape wine plants. So where the A.J. Simpson was working uh, in the Brazil. So with the help of the Brazilian consortium, since the disease is very severe, so they have sequenced all the genome and they final to come to a final conclusion. And it is uh, reported to be the first plant pathogenic bacteria. So if it is a normally first bacterium, it is a Haemophilus influenza. That is the first bacterium to be completely genome sequenced. First plant pathogenic bacterium to be completely genome sequenced is a Xylella fastidiosa. It is generally causes diseases like as Pierce disease of grape wine, citrus variegated chlorosis, Pierce disease of citrus. Uh, citrus variegated chlorosis almond leaf scorch all fall for dwarf and like like i various kinds of diseases it generally causes so the first plant pathogenic fungus uh, bacterium to be completely genome sequenced is xylella fastidiosa sequenced by ajg simpson in 2000 and name the first plant pathogenic virus to be completely genome sequenced here they have mentioned only first plant pathogenic virus they have not mentioned a dna virus or rna virus okay so if the first plant pathogenic virus meant it goes to cauliflower mosaic virus so it was sequenced by frank et al in 1980 so if it is mentioned first plant pathogenic rna virus so it is a tmb tobacco mosaic virus the scientist involved is golet et al 1980 so that's why if they are mentioned uh, just the plant pathogenic virus then the credit goes to cauliflower mosaic virus prank at all 1980 so when it comes to rna if they have mentioned rna virus then uh, it is a tmv tobacco mosaic virus golet et al uh, year is uh, 1980 so protein for protein hypothesis was given by protein for protein hypothesis was given by j e vanderplank 
so this j e vanderplank is considered as father of plant disease epidemiology right and india nagarajan is generally considered as father of uh, indian plant disease epidemiology anyway this protein for protein hypothesis was given by j e vanderplank father of uh, plant disease epidemiology just now we discussed the father of plant disease epidemiology is uh, j e vanderplank who coined the term phytoalexin so phyto means uh, plant alexin means a uh, protecting substances are to ward off so phytoalexins are the plant protecting substances which are produced by the plant after infection to just prevent the further invading the further inv invasion of the pathogens so this there are various kinds of phytoalexins are there and the uh, the term was coined by or uh, this uh, phytoalexins was first discovered by muller and borger in 1940 while working with the phytophthora system phytotherapy system so the first discovered uh, or first isolated phyto uh, phytoalexin is uh, pisatin so pisatin is the first discovered or isolated uh, uh, phytoalexins okay the term phytoalexins was coined by uh, muller and borger and uh, discovered is also the credit goes to muller and uh, Borger only. Uh, the next question is, what is the first phytoalexin to be isolated? Just now we mentioned first phytoalexin to be isolated is pisatin from pea plant. Example of externally seed-borne pathogens. There are various kinds of uh, examples as a covered smut of barley. Uh, other things also there. Uh, but uh, if we ask uh, internally seed-borne pathogen, the best example is uh, loose smut of uh, wheat and barley. So the loose smut of wheat and barley are the best examples of internally seed-borne pathogen. But externally seed-borne pathogen, various kinds of pathogens are there, right? So the next one is the phenolic theory was given by. First of all, we will see what is this phenolic theory. So phenolic theory states that uh, two kinds of onions are there, right? Red onion and white onions. Generally, there is a disease called onion smudge disease, which is caused by Coltrotrichum circinans. This Coltrotrichum circinans infection is a way, infection is almost nil in when it comes to red onions and the severity is more when it comes to white onions. The reason is red onions contains two phenolic compounds. Those are catch-call and proto-catchic acid. So this catch-call and proto-catchic acid is absent in white onions. What this catch-call and proto-catchic acid will do, this phenolic acid act as a toxin against the pathogen, some kind of... Uh, toxic kind of metal against the pathogen so that the pathogen cannot cause uh, infection in the red onions whereas due to the absence of this uh, catch call and proto catch call in the white onions so this uh, onion smudge disease will be severe in uh, white onions so this theory is generally called as phenolic theory red onions are resistant to onion smudge why because it contains two phenolic compounds catch call and proto catch call that is the thing the theory is phenolic theory that was given by jc walker jc walker the next one is the sexual stages of rust fungi was discovered by uh, sexual stages of rust fungi was discovered by Craig et al. C R A I J E 1927. So this sexual stages of rust fungi is also known as pycnial stage, also known as permacial stage, also known as uh, zero stage. So that is the sexual stages of rust fungi that was discovered by Craig et al. What is the first textbook in uh, plant pathology? So there are couple of plenty of books was published like uh, Nova Plantarum Genera, Species Plantarum, or uh, System of Nature, uh, Synopsis Methodica Fungorum. All the books are published. So, but all the books are that are related to maybe classification or taxonomy or systematic such kind of things. But the first textbook that is completely concentrating on plant pathology. It's a very 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 important question and it was asked many times before. And the first textbook is the Diseases of Cultivated Crops and their causes and their control i repeat diseases of cultivated crops and their causes and their uh, control that is the first textbook of plant pathology that was written by jg kuni 1858 of course there are lots of books that were published before 1858 also as i told you that there are the, the books are the, that is completely devoted to taxonomy and other kinds of things but this diseases of cultivated crops and their causes and their control is uh, considered to be the first textbook that is completely devoting on plant pathology comp i mean uh, just uh, you know uh, concentrating on the various kinds of diseases and their symptoms and a little management practice at the time there is you know not that much idea about the management practices but uh, management practices as well he mentioned in the book i repeat the diseases of cultivated crops and their causes and their control that was published in the year 1858 so parasexuality was uh, discovered by first of all what is parasexuality so, for example, if you see Deuteromycota or fungi imperfect group of fungi, they can reprodu uh, reproduce uh, uh, 
uh, instead of sexual reproduction they will go through a mechanism called uh, another kind of reproduction is called parasexuality plasmogamy karyosis meiosis uh, will happen at a regular manner or, but not at specified points so that is called parasexuality that was discovered by ponti carvo and roper in 1952 it is uh, also very important what was asked many times so parasexuality was discovered by ponti carvo and roper parasexuality was discovered in the organism as per gillis and nidulens in the year 1952 flame shaped conidia is uh, produced by so generally venturia produces a flame shaped conidia sickle shaped conidia is produced by coltrotricum fusarium these are all the couple of pathogens generally produces uh, sickle shaped conidia we can see like a half crescent conidia we can also say so this is the typical character of this uh, coltrotricum and fusarium but the main difference between coltrotricum and uh, uh, fusarium is coltrotricum contains oil globules but fusarium contains no such kind of oil globules this kind of septations if it is a micro conidia sometimes no septation also we can see but if macro conidia 3 to 5 uh, septation that we can observe Uh, i repeat flame shaped conidia is produced by venturia sickle shaped conidia is produced by the pathogens like fusarium and coltrotricum and filiform shaped ascospore is uh, produced by claviceps so claviceps generally produces uh, filiform shaped ascospore like this uh next one is uh, filiform conidia is produced by so mycosporella generally produces filiform kind of uh, conidia yolk fungi yolk fungi zygote fungi are other names of uh, zygomycota group of fungi for example uh, if you see uh, other names of the fungi like uh, mm, uh, oomycota is generally called as uh, uh, egg fungi so sorry oomycota group of fungi is also known as pseudo fungi uh, egg fungi such kind of other names are there based on the characters uh, that they possess yolk fungi means uh, yolk fungi or otherwise called as zygote fungi because uh, during uh, reproduction zygote is formed that is uh, zygospore right so yolk fungi zygote fungi these are all the other names of this uh, zygomycota group of fungi only bread mold so which fungi is generally considered as bread mold neurospora is generally considered uh, neurospora crassa is generally considered as uh, bread mold pin or uh, red bread mold Uh, just a minute just a minute bread mold fungus right sorry sorry it's not neurospora bread mold is generally rhizophus uh, stolonifer this pin mold or red bread mold is uh, neurospora crassa uh, just uh, make a correction of it bread mold rhizophus uh, stolonifer red uh, red bread mold or pin mold is uh, de- devoted to uh, neurospora crassa peach leaf called is caused by peach leaf called is caused by taphrina deformans it produces a naked as a kind of sexual reproduction sexual reprodu- uh, uh, sexual uh, fruiting body okay so peach leaf called is caused by taphrina deformans which is broom of cherry is caused by taphrina epiphila epiphila or epiphila so spindle shaped ascospore is uh, produced by generally spermoptera is a fungi that can produce a spindle shaped ascospore Hat shaped ascospore is produced by Ascoidea rubens. So Ascoidea rubens produces hat shaped uh, ascospore. Fissionist Cyzosaccharomyces. Cyzosaccharomyces is generally considered as a fissionist. Okay. What is the colony morphology of Aspergillus agriacus? There are some couple of fungi here there. Uh, Aspergillus agriacus, Aspergillus tamari, brown color. Uh, like that uh, we have mentioned in the mycology section, like uh, different kinds of Aspergillus species and their colony morphology. Colony morphology in the sense just how the colony will look like, white or red or green or black or whatever it is. Okay. So the colony morphology of Aspergillus agriacus is generally it is yellow in color. Okay. The next one is hypocria is otherwise called as trichoderma is otherwise called as hypocria rufa. Okay. Is it generally trichoderma? 16 ascospore producing fungi again same uh, trichoderma or hypocria or rufa or the 16 ascospore producing fungi alternate host for jawar rust or sorghum rust so this question is also important question oxalis carniculata oxalis carniculata we can also called as a sleeping beauty we can also called as a sleeping beauty which is uh, generally considered as the alternate host for uh, sorghum rust and other species like uh, yellow sorrels and wood sorrels also considered to be a, as the alternate host when generally this oxalis carniculata uh, that is sleeping beauty is considered as alternate host lack of iridal stage is known as demicyclic rust it's a very 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 important lack of iridal stage is known as demicyclic so double celled teliospore is uh, produced by 
so generally the teleosphere double cell teleosphere is the characteristic feature of a paxenia so if you see the types of teleosphere single celled eromyces double celled paxenia multi celled phragmedium parachute like teleosphere ravinilia so such kind of types of teleosphere that we have already studied in the mycology section right so here the double celled teleosphere is produced by paxenia so paxenia generally produces double celled teleosphere multi celled teleosphere is produced by so multi cell is the characteristic feature of a phragmedium or we can also say phragmedium mucronatum but generally you can uh, consider phragmedium phragmedium produces multi cell teleosphere fairy rings are uh, found in there is a fungus called agaricus agaricus uh, generally the fairy rings are uh, evident so why it is uh, called as fairy ring if you see it form a ring like uh, structure with the grass or uh, sometimes wherever it go that's called called fairy ring it's like a ring like structure fly fungus generally entomoptera is considered as fly fungus because the spores that flies and kills some kind of insect that's why it's called as fly fungus jet black conidia is produced by nigrospora produces jet black conidia fusarium producing toxins so fusarium produces various kinds of toxins like fusaric acid don dioxin level and all fuminosin trichothecin these are all the various kinds of toxin that is produced by the uh fusarium toxin fusarium so regarding this uh, the kind of toxins which is produced by penicillium aspergillus fusarium all those things that we have mentioned in the mycology section that was published in the previous year so please go through that and then come to this uh, section so that we will paste it in the uh, comment section fusarium producing toxin i repeat fusaric acid dioxin we can also call as a don toxin uh fuminosins trichothecins and xerolinones these are all the various kinds of toxins that is produced by the fusarium coral fungus coral fungus example of coral fungus Cla claveria so generally claveria is considered as a coral fungus so the sexual stages of the following fungi so the teleomorphic stages they can also called as sexual stages are perfect stages right so bipolar is cochleobolus alternaria levia taphrina lalaria so dresselera pyranophora resectonia thanatophorus so these are all the teleomorphic stages of the fungus o mycota group of cell wall is uh, composed of so o mycota fungal cell wall is made up of chitin o mycota cell wall is made up of uh, cellulose uh, plus a uh, little amount of hydroxyproline as well so here uh, there are uh, majority of the o mycota group of fungal cell wall is made up of cellulose plus hydroxyproline only but there are couple of fungi even though they comes under a uh, mycota group of fungi their cell wall is made up of uh, chitin for example fungi like uh, acaila aphidogaila saproligenia and leptomitas these are all the fungi even though they comes under a mycota group of fungi their cell wall is made up of uh, chitin so but generally a mycota group of cell wall is made up of uh, cellulose plus a little amount of hydroxyproline as well sometimes they may, they may only mention this hydroxyproline okay so be aware of it and the yeast cell wall is made up of our yeast cell wall is composed of yeast cell wall is composed of mannin beta glucan mannin beta glucan fungi used in the genetic studies so neurospora crassa aspergillus are generally used in uh, genetic studies bacteria used in uh, genetic studies agrobacterium tumefaciens so virus used in genetic studies califlor mosaic virus and tobacco mosaic virus so here uh, we have some uh, couple of uh, diseases and their characters given in pathogens nature spore viability okay so grain smut grain smut is caused by the pathogen spatulotica sorghi now it is called as sporosorium sorghi and uh, it is a uh, nature seed born it survive over 10 years head smut spatulotica reliana or sporosorium reliana uh, spore viability is 2 years nature is uh, soil born loose smut a uh, spatulotica cruenti or cruenta or sporosorium cruentum uh, nature is seed born uh, viability is around 4 years long smut tolyposporium erenbergi or sporosorium erenbergi uh, nature is air born uh, among all the smuts uh, so, uh, among the all the smuts of this uh, sorghum this is air born air born and uh, viability is around 2 uh, years father of uh, bacteriological uh, techniques generally uh, robert koch is considered a father of bacteriological techniques because the many techniques whatever we are using in the microbiology poor plate uh, spread plate uh, uh, introduction of gelatins and various other kinds of things that was introduced by robert koch so the techniques he was introduced that's why is considered as a father of bacteriological techniques 
and is also the man behind this uh, coach postulates right so out of four coach postulates three was given by robert coach fourth was given by uh, ef smith so this ef smith is considered as father of plant bacteriology right yeah the next one is what is the first plant bacterial disease to be reported so they are asking first plant bacterial disease fire blight of apple and pear is generally considered as the first plant bacterial disease right irvinia amylovora uh, which is uh, caused by irvinia amylovora before it is called as micrococcus amylovorus now it is called as irvinia amylovora so the disease was discovered in the year 1882 and it is considered to be the first plant bacterial disease that was discovered by tj barrill in 1882 so that's why he is considered as a founder of uh, plant bacteriology father is ef smith only but founder is uh, tj barrill size of bacteria ranges from generally 0.1 micrometer to 2 micrometer into uh, 2 micrometer to 5 micrometer in diameter i repeat 0.1 to 2 into 2 to 5 micrometer in general uh, diameter that is the general uh, size of the bacteria first bacterial virulent gene isolated from crop crop they are asking bacterial virulent gene isolated from a crop is called soybean so soybean bacterial uh, will term bacterial blight which is caused by uh, pseudomonas serenge pathovirus serenge right uh, decolorizing agent in uh, uh, gram staining generally this gram staining technique was given by christian gram in 1884 Uh, which is a technique which is used to differentiate the gram positive and the gram negative based on the color reaction gram positive will produce uh, purple or violet gram negative produces pink or red in color after staining so generally there are various kinds of stains are used uh, decolorizing agent uh, counter stain so so we many kinds of things are used right so generally decolorizing agent is uh, methyl alcohol methyl alcohol is generally used uh, as a decolorizing agent one more thing is uh, um, counter stain so this is also important safranin is generally considered as a counter stain the next one is a fluctuation test is used for the identification of bacterial mutations so bacterial mutations are generally identified by a technique called a fluctuation test which was developed by lurie and delbruck the next one is penicillin was discovered by penicillin was discovered by alexander fleming 1928 streptomycin streptomycin was discovered by waxman in 1940 e both are the uh, antibiotics the first world's first discovered antibiotic is penicillin Old's first broad spectrum antibiotic is uh, streptomycin. Penicillin is isolated from a fungus, fungus called uh, Penicillium notatum. Uh, Penicillium notatum. Now the you know other strains like Penicillium chrysogenum, which is giving more yield than the present Penicillium notatum. Streptomycin was isolated isolated from a fungus called Streptomyces griseus. Uh, for the isolation of this both uh, antibiotic, uh, both got uh, Alexander Fleming got Nobel Prize in 1945 probably. Uh, streptomycin for the discovery of streptomycin waxman got a nobel prize in 1954 so capsule staining agent generally indian ink indian ink is generally uh, used for the staining of uh, capsule the next one is endospore staining agent okay endospore staining agent so endospore staining agent is malachite green is generally considered endospore staining agent so bacterial food storage organ staining agent first of all we will see what is the bacterial food storage organ um sudan black bee sudan black bee is generally considered as a uh, bacterial food storage organ staining agent so para beta hydroxy butyrate is generally considered as the food storage organ of bacteria so this bacterial food storage organ staining agent is a sudan black bee number of rings present in a gram negative bacteria there are some gram negative okay generally gram positive contains two rings m and s gram negative bacteria contains four rings lpms okay so gram negative contains four rings lpms gram positive bacteria belonging to the family gram negative bacteria belonging to the family anyway gram positive bacteria belonging to the family firmicutes gram negative bacteria belonging to the family gracilicutes again same gram negative grass liquids transduction was discovered by das in the organism so the, there are three phenomena are there right uh, conjugation transformation and the transduction so conjugation was discovered by lederberg and tatum 1946 transformation was discovered by griffith 1928 transduction was discovered by lederberg and zinder in the organism salmonella so here the question is transduction was discovered by lederberg and zinder in 1952 in the organism salmonella typhimurium uh, example of xylem inhabiting bacteria they are asking xylem inhabiting bacteria we can take the example of uh, pierce disease of grapevine xylella fastidiosa 
and sugarcane redstone stunting which is caused by livesonia zeli subspecies zeli so this livesonia zeli subspecies zeli before called as clavibacter zeli subspecies zeli now it is called as livesonia zeli subspecies zeli so this zeilella and sugarcane redstone stunting that is uh, livesonia zeli both are comes under uh, this xylem inhabiting bacteria so size of the plasmid so plasmid generally size is about 200 uh, kb the next one is pierce disease of grape vine is caused by just now we discussed right xylella fastidiosa uh, next one is vector for bacterial wilt of corn so for bacterial wilt of corn corn flea beetle chitonema pulcaria is the vector when it comes to vector for vascular wilt uh, stiped cucumber beetle or spotted cucumber beetle diabrotica vectata and diabrotica duodecim punctata generally considered as uh, uh, vectors for this uh, uh, bacterial wilt of uh, vascular wilt of cucurbits name the bacterial pathogen that enters through trichomes many pathogens are there that just telling one important pathogen bacterial canker of tomato uh, which is caused by clavibacter michiganensis subspecies michiganensis that is a very very important one and name the bacterial pathogen that enters through lenticels uh, we can take the example of potato common scab or potato scab okay Amphitrichus type of flagella and cephalotrichus. In bacterial flagella, there are various kinds of flagella are there, right? Aetrichus, Xylella, Aetrichus, Amph, Monotrichus, Xanthomonas. Uh, like that, as Aetrichus, Monotrichus, Amphitrichus, Peritrichus. So the best example for Amphitrichus is Pseudomonas. Cephalotrichus is a Pseudomonas fluorescens. I repeat, example of Amphitrichus is Pseudomonas. Example of Cephalotrichus is Pseudomonas fluorescens. Bergis Manual of Systemic Bacteriology was published in the year. So, 1984. Bergis Manual of Determinative Bacteriology, Bergis Manual of Systemic Bacteriology. Two kinds of uh, 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 manuals are there. So, these are all just uh, new kinds of adding new kinds of bacteria rules and regulations. Various kinds of things will be there in this Bergis Manual, which was started by David Ergi, David H. Bergi. Okay. So, Determinative Bacteriology means 1923. Systemic Bacteriology means 1984. Irvinia genus was created by Irvinia created by Winslow. Pseudomonas was created by Migula 1984. Totally damaged cell wall is called. Totally damaged cell wall is called a protoplast, which is a characteristic feature of Gram positive. Gram negative spiroplast. Partially damaged cell wall is the characteristic feature of Gram negative. Bacteriophages was discovered by Twart and Herley. Uh, 1915 and 1917 uh, respectively they individually discovered this bacteriophage so that is bacteriophage bacterial eater or virus that infect bacteria is known as bacteriophage right ralstonia solnae serum race 4 infect race 2 infect let me see there are five races of uh, ralstonia solnae serum are there so race 1 race 2 race 3 race 4 race 5 race 1 infects uh, solnae sea crabs race 2 musaceae race 3 potato race 4 ginger race 5 mulberry this is the order they have asked a race 4 race 4 infects uh, ginger race 2 infects banana that is a musaceae family okay so this is the answer race 4 infects ginger race 2 infects musaceae or banana this is also very very important bacterial blight of pom granate or poma granate which is uh, caused by xanthomonas axonopodes pathover punicae so this is also important one sugarcane redstone stunting is uh, caused by sugarcane redstone stunting is caused by life sonia zeli subspecies zeli just now we discussed right Uh, the example of uh, xylem limited uh, bacteria so sugarcane redstone stunting is caused by xy life sonia xyli subspecies xyli before it is called as clavibacter xyli subspecies xyli who developed local lichen assay so the local lichen assay was developed by homes homes developed the local lichen assay in 1929 so this local lichen assay indicates uh, like uh, the amount of sap we are rubbing against the plant is uh, directly proportional to the amount of symptoms that is produced so how much sap we are rubbing that much amount of symptoms will develop that is a generally thing okay localization as so the chemical which is used in uh, localization as is carborandum powder so we can chemically called as a silicon carbide right so the first viroid disease to be reported as pstv potato spindle tuber viroid was first reported by diner and raymer 1971 Hybridoma technology for the production of monoclonal antibodies was uh, developed by two scientists Kohler and Milstein so they developed the hybridoma technology for the production of uh, antibodies uh, spiroplasma was uh, discovered by spiroplasma was uh, discovered by Davis et al bimodal transmission so which means the virus can transmit through two means maybe uh, it was first this phenomenon was first discovered by Cali- discovered in califlor mosaic virus Uh, which means the califlor mosaic virus can spread through sap and as well as aphids 
So this bimodal transmission was first reported by Chaffant and Chapman in 1962. The largest plant virus family. So generally Potiviridae or Potivirus is considered the largest family. Longest means a Clostrovirus. We can take example of Citrus stress is a virus, right? Smallest viride. So Coconut Kadang Kadang viride. Uh, which can uh, which is generally considered to be the smallest uh, viride which contains just 246 nucleotides so measuring length of tmv tobacco mosaic virus so 18 into 300 nanometer is the measuring length of tobacco mosaic virus cell to cell movement of virus is uh, facilitated too. generally the virus moves from one cell to another cell through plasmodesmata so generally this plasmodesmata is smaller than that of uh, plant virus but this plant virus is still uh, able to move through by producing a protein called a moment protein so with the help of this moment protein this uh, uh, virus uh, mediated uh, goes through i mean uh, uh, moment, move through from one cell to another cell so the answer is plasmodesmata so if they ask plasmodesmata how they are moving with the help of a moment protein okay so for further more information students can refer this book a vision into plant pathology a complete student version Further doubts, clarification, student can reach us at www.geekyresearcher.com. Stay geeky and stay tuned. We are Team Geeky Researchers.